Hi, it's uh, the end of the month, that last Monday of the month, and we're going to tell another story today. I'm Delta Picmello, and I'm with the Sacramento History Museum. Welcome to Storytime. Now, this month here at the museum, we've been talking a lot on our museum Mondays about agriculture in the Sacramento region. And I'm reminded this time of year, especially in September, about the harvesting of one of my favorite fruits, and that's melons. In fact, when I was younger, when we lived up in Amador County, a few miles away from us was a melon farm. Now, we weren't farmers, but my father thought it would be very cool to go to the farm and get a bunch of melons and take them down to the farmer's market. So he and my brother would wake up at four in the morning and drive the truck to the melon farm and load up with all of these wonderful melons and take them down to the farmer's market on Sunday mornings, right about this time of year. Now, the story I'm going to tell you is about a melon and it's about a spider. It's actually a very, he's a very famous spider. His name is Anansi. You may have heard of him. Now, Anansi originated from West Africa, but Anansi is known all over the world. His stories have traveled throughout the world. He's very, very famous. And Anansi is a bit of a trickster. Now, this is a trickster story. Tricksters are usually usually small animals, often, that are very, very clever, but also rather lazy. And so they spend a lot of their time figuring out how to trick others to do their work for them. So we've got Anansi the spider and a trickster tail, and we've got melons. This is called Anansi and the Talking Melon, and it's retold by Eric Kimmel. So, it begins long, long ago when the earth was first set down and the sky was lifted up. Anansi the spider sat high in a thorn tree, looking down into Elephant's garden. Elephant was hoeing his melon patch and all of those sweet melons just called out to Anansi, see how ripe and juicy we are, come and eat us. Well, Anansi loved to eat melons. He loved all kinds of melons. He loved cantaloupe and honeydew and watermelon and cassava. But he was much too lazy to grow melons for himself. So he sat in the thorn tree watching and waiting. As the sun grew high in the sky and the day grew hot, Anansi saw Elephant finally put down his hoe and go inside to take a nap. Ah, this was the opportunity Anansi had been waiting for. So in that thorn tree, he broke off a thorn and he dropped down right into the middle of a huge melon patch and he found the ripest, largest melon. He took the thorn and bore a tiny hole into the melon and then he squeezed inside. <gasps> inside the melon everywhere he looked was just dripping luscious melon and he was hungry. So he ate and 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 he ate, and he ate until Finally, he was round as a berry. Ugh, I'm full. Whew. Well, Elephant will probably be back soon, so I better go. So he started to squeeze out of the hole, but he found out, much to his surprise, that the hole was just the right size for a skinny spider, but it was much too small for a fat one. Ah, I'm stuck. Ah. <sighs> I guess I'll have to wait here until I get thin again. So he sat down on a bunch of seeds and waited to get thin again. Well, waiting to get thin takes a long time and he was bored. Ah, I have nothing to do, it's so boring. <sighs> then he heard Elephant returning to the garden and suddenly a terribly, wonderfully wicked idea came into his head. I know. When Elephant gets into the garden, I will say something and he will think it's the melon talking. Ah! <laughs> 
What fun! <coughs> so Elephant walked into his melon garden. He was admiring all the beautiful melons and he bent down and picked up the biggest, ripest melon. He said, look at you, you're the best melon. And he heard a sound. Ouch! Who said that? Who said that? I did. The melon. I didn't know melons could talk. Well, of course we can talk. We talk all the time. The trouble is, you never listen. A talking melon? Who would believe it? I've got to show this melon to the king. I, I got to show him that I know how to grow talking melons in my garden. So Elephant took the melon and he hurried down the road. And along the way, he ran into Hippo. Elephant, where are you going with that melon? I'm taking it to the king. Well, what for? The king has hundreds of melons in his garden. He doesn't need another one. Yeah, but this one is different. This one talks. I heard it. A talking melon. I don't believe you. Why, that's as ridiculous as uh, a skinny hippo. <gasps> Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Did you say that, elephant? No, it's the melon. It talks. Do you believe me now? Ooh, I do believe you. And I want to go with you. I want to see what the king says when we show him a talking melon. So now, elephant and hippo hurried down the road carrying the melon with Anansi inside. And along the way, they ran into Warthog. Where are you going with that melon? We're taking it to the king. What for? You know the king has hundreds of melons. He doesn't need another melon. Yes, but this one talks. We heard it. A talking melon. Ah, you're silly. You're ridiculous. In fact, that's as ridiculous as... A handsome warthog? <gasps> Who said that? Did you say that elephant? Did you say that hippo? No, it's the melon. It talks. Do you believe us now? Oh, I do. I want to go with you too. I want to see what the king says when we show him a talking melon. So along the road they went. Elephant and hippo and warthog carrying the talking melon they were going to take to the king. Along the way they ran into ostrich and they ran into tortoise and they ran into zebra and they all couldn't believe it was a talking melon until they heard it for themselves. Finally, all of the animals were gathered together and they came before the king where Elephant bowed very low and he set the melon down on the ground at the king's feet. A melon? You've brought me a melon? Why would I need another melon when I have a garden full of melons? Well, you don't have a melon like this one. This is a talking melon. A talking melon? Hmm. Well then, melon, say something. But the melon said nothing. Melon, don't be shy. If you can speak, say, say anything you like, anything at all. Still, the melon said nothing, and the king was growing impatient. Melon, if you can speak, I demand that you say something now. Still, the melon did not make a sound and the king was furious. Well, this is obviously a stupid melon. Stupid, am I? Why would you say that? I'm not the one standing there talking to a melon. <gasps> Impudent melon, how dare this melon insult me? And the king picked up the melon and he threw it as far and as long and as hard as he could. The melon rolled and bounced and rolled and bounced and bounced and rolled all the way back to Elephant's house where it slammed into the thorn tree and broke into a hundred pieces. Well, Anansi picked himself up out from the middle of all of that melon rind and brushed himself off. You see, all the excitement had made him thin again and he was hungry. Ooh, bananas. And he scurried over to the banana tree and 
climbed up to the top, settled himself into a bunch of bananas and began to eat. Well, meanwhile, Elephant returned back from visiting the king and he walked straight into the melon patch and he, he yelled at all the melons. He said, you melons, you all got me in trouble with the king. From now on, you can say whatever you like. I'm not going to listen to a word you say. Good for you, elephant, said the bananas. We bananas should have warned you. Talking melons are nothing but trouble. <laughs> and that's the story of Anansi and the talking melon. So I hope you enjoyed that story. And if you have, you'll come back. And at the end of next month in October, I'll have another story for you.